Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. I'm here with Jacob and we're gonna talk through common pitfalls you should avoid when you're getting going with your first computer vision problem. Okay, so you've got your idea, you know what you want the outcome to be, you're ready to start making value out of your images and videos, but what do you do next? And how do you make sure you're setting yourself up for success? I'm excited to dive into this topic. So Jacob, I think you have a pie in the sky idea that you might want to tackle. Yeah, so for purposes of our, our walkthrough today, let's, let's imagine that I'm a used car salesman and I want to make an app. My, my, my idea, my dream is that you'll have an app where you'll take your phone and you'll scan around a car and then you'll send that video back to me and I'll send you a price, what I'll buy it for. So I can just automate the entire pricing procedure for you know just examining a car with computer vision. So what, what, are, what are some things I should be thinking about and what are, what are some of the considerations before I embark and actually try to do this? I like that idea, like a magic pricing app, right? Like I download it, I go to the lot, I walk around and boom, you know, $10,000 for my used car or $5,000, that's good, that's good. Yeah, I think that um, like most computer vision problems, having a almost a magical like where you want to be is really good to have a directional north star of the goal. But the key usually is starting with a well-defined, and when I say well-defined, I mean like narrowly, narrowly constrained first part of that overall problem, okay? So for example, some things that we might wanna be thinking about in pricing a used car is we might wanna be thinking about, you know, is there any damage on this vehicle? We might wanna be thinking about how many miles are on this vehicle. Certainly wanna think about the make and model of the vehicle. We uh, might want to be, uh, thinking about hmm, any other sort of visual impediments, the number of doors in the vehicle, uh, the tread on the tires, all these visual things can give us signal that we can then feed in uh, to create like a pricing model. And so in this case, I mean, I think what we should be thinking about is we're going to build a model that's going to price a car based on knowing things about the car. And those things that we're going to know about the car, we're going to know from computer vision. So for example, like if you had a photo of a car, you could find all the scratches, you had a photo of a car. And so in your case, you said you want to have like a video file or a video feed, which again, remember video is just a collection of a bunch of images. And so we could start with even uh, a video or, or whatnot. But I think goal number one is let's whittle this problem down to the highest value individual like uh, signal that we could find. Because if we start with this um, whole thing where everything's gonna be automated, uh, or we're gonna know every visual element about the car, we might end up biting off more than we can chew. Mm -hmm. But if we start with a really um, valuable part of that overall puzzle, we'll be in a good place to build on top of that momentum. So I guess the question would be like, what do you think would be the single most valuable individual visual attribute that we would want to know in the process of pricing a car? Yeah, I mean, I guess if I really had to just narrow it down to the, like the first thing, maybe it would just be the, the mileage odometer. Mm. Like maybe you could just have them kind of be able to take a picture of their odometer, automatically see the miles and have mm. that enter into the app. Yeah, so like you take a photo of the dash and the model then identifies where the odometer is mm -hmm. and then also reads the number of miles. Yep. And that'd be like a first useful input and step towards our goal. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so... Let's, uh, before we dive into how we might structure that one problem, mm -hmm. what are some other like high value tasks that, I, I agree, maybe mileage is the most important, but what are other things we might want to visually uh, pull from yeah. our, our car video? I mean, maybe we could have uh, something that kind of just automatically identifies scratches or mm. any sort of like exterior damage. Mm. Um, that seems something that like, that might be a little bit more tractable to be able to kind of like tag as we're going around. Maybe mm. maybe that might be something that we might want to kind of break down and mm. start to constrain our, our task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think scratches would be good. Model and make would be good too. And then we could even be more specific, right? Like maybe we build the app that first only works for mm. trucks. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, or the map only works for sedans or something like this. Just because it's, it's going to get different every time we switch between different cars and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so being really specific in terms of 
and, of, of, of learning. And, and I guess maybe another question I might have is, let's say I want, like how, how powerful is this technology? Do I have to have uh, images and videos that I'm showing it of every single car that I like make and model that I want to identify, or can I just show it one make and model and it will just learn and know for all of them? Yeah, yeah, so I think it's a great question, sort of the, n the natural next step. So step one is, as we just said, what's our pie in the sky, like ultimate end goal? Step two is, what is the, what are the component parts of that? Um, and picking the highest value one. So that's what we've done now. And I think let's, let's zoom into the odometer one mm -hmm. um, and walk through how we'd solve the odometer problem specifically. So you just asked, you know, okay, so we're gonna solve the odometer problem. How many images, like do I need images of like all different cars? If I just have a photo of one type of odometer, will I be good to go? Like maybe like every Honda odometer is, it looks one way. Certainly like Tesla is gonna be sort of a funny edge case because like the Tesla odometer is gonna be quite different um, than these other cases. And so it's like, okay, like what, what, what do I need to do? And I think what you need to do next is think about you, the used car salesman, what are the uh, most frequent examples that your model is going to have to work on? And by that I mean like on your used car lot, maybe you most frequently are dealing with Honda Accords or something like this, or you're dealing with you know that style of vehicle with a lot of frequency. You should be thinking, what is the um, most likely example that I wanna solve for? And can I collect images of that most likely example. And maybe the top 10 most likely cars in this use case would be, would be good to start. So in other words, our next step is collecting data, images in this case, that are representative of the images that our model's going to have to learn from. So in your use case, I mean, I think um, it's gonna depend on how many different odometers you have. And this is part, it gets a little bit experimental of like, how many images we're going to ultimately need to get started. Um, we could have a whole different video on how many images do I need. Um, but I think the to start, to do, do something relatively straightforward and get going, maybe we could start with 500 images of a few specific car models. So maybe we limit it to Honda Accord, Honda Civic, um, and maybe like Nissan Altima, just to keep on sort of in a similar family. And with those 500 images, we're like, okay, you know, now I have the ability to uh, learn from these images. I've, I've narrowly defined my problem of first getting the mileage from the odometer. I have images ready. What, what would I do next? Yeah, I, I guess then you, you'd be thinking like, okay, so you have these images, you've constrained the problem, and now you need to kind of like assemble a data set and start to organize them into the, the data set that you're gonna want to be passing through to the process. Um, so at that point, I think you're actually going to start running experiments to see if you can model based on those and see if you have to uh, constrain for further, gather more data, or um, go forward that way. Yeah. Yeah, so once we have our data organized, you know, that's when we kind of fall into the natural steps of building any computer vision model. We'll link to videos of the, the process that we've talked about. Once I've collected images, I organize them, I annotate them, where I, annotation basically means like, telling the model which part of the image contains the odometer mm -hmm. in this use case. So draw a box around the odometer on that dashboard image. Uh, so I have to do that for all my images. And then as you said, I train a model and then I test out that model and see how it does. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'd start to make use of active learning and other techniques, which is basically a fancy way of saying, where is my model doing worst? Where's my magical app? Which odometers is it failing on most frequently? And can I get more examples? of those odometers. Because mm -hmm. the places where it's failing are the ones where I can most improve. And then, okay, let's pretend that I've gone through this process and I have my app that can read odometers. And I'm like, okay, great. You know, now, now I have some momentum. Now I can build on to this, this, uh, this odometer reading app with mm -hmm. some other uh, inputs and get closer and closer and closer to the overall valuation. So I can do odometers for these 10 vehicles Maybe the next thing I'm gonna do is add 10 more vehicles, get more odometer images, annotate them, retrain, have my model. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I'm like, okay, you know, I can do odometers pretty well. Now can I start to do scratches? Mm -hmm. And you kind of, you'd follow the same process. You'd say, you know, maybe there's only one type of scratch or one type of dent I wanna start with. Maybe there's one type of 
vehicle dents that I want to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd collect your data set, you do annotation, you train, and then you continue. And while this sounds like a lot of steps, the truth is when you get the process down once mm -hmm. for going through that pass, I think it gets much faster. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like, you know, if I'm going to be going back through and doing this process over and over again, it'd be nice to kind of have everything all in one spot or all of my technologies kind of linked together so I can easily make a pass through, um, again, through the through the pipeline. Would you, would you say that's the case? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, stringing together a tool chain or having a tool where you can go everything from collecting your images to organizing the odometers from the scratches to training the model to reusing and deploying that model. I think something we maybe were a little light on was like deploying that model. You said in your ideal world, you want a mobile app. Oh yeah, yeah. So we'd want the app to be, or so we'd want or that model to be able to run on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. um, but basically every time we'd be updating that model with new, better images. Mm -hmm. um, so more odometer images, more scratch images. Pretty soon we'd get to the make and model of the car. We'd get to the tread. And then bit by bit, we built up to this super, this super app, and we'd be able to pass it a video, and you'd say, hey, you know, the user, user experience would be like, hey, open up your app, okay, go to the dashboard, they'd go over to the dashboard. Check. Check, yep. Then they'd go and they'd walk around the whole car, and the app would recognize. Check. Check. Open and, up the hood. Yeah, open up the hood, look for the engine, <laughs> look for any, any engine damage. Check. Um, and, and along you go. And then uh, each of those attributes get fed into maybe a, prediction model that feeds back, you know, $5,000 for this used car. And I think what's really, really important when you think about getting started with vision problems is that exact thought process that Jacob did, where he said, you know, my big idea is I want to be able to have an app that automatically prices. But to start, I could have a lot of value simply by knowing automated odometer readings or automated scratch detection or automated make vehicle detection. Um, and when you start with that way, you're able to build bigger and bigger and bigger um, and build up the foundation and have a more likely probability for success instead of biting off way more than, than you can chew. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. That, I definitely feel like this problem seems a lot more tractable even just talking through it than when we originally started with the idea. It's awesome. Yeah, so the, uh, what we work on, on at RoboFlow is exactly this, this process, making the seamless to go from collection, organization, annotation, training, and deployment. Um, so please, you know, feel free to, to, to check it out or get in touch with us as you uh, get going with your vision problems. We're eager to speak specifically with you about vision problems that you're tackling. We have solutions engineers, a sales team that can get in touch and make sure that your vision problem can come to life and help you be successful in tackling your business problem. So please be sure to, to reach out. Um, you can find us at roboflow.com, of course. And as a last note, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for additional content like this about what is computer vision, how do I get started, and all these sorts of questions that um, you might ask. Feel free to drop any other questions or comments uh, in the comments below. And thanks so much for tuning in.